Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are on assignment at the gas station. Now, any way you slice it, fuel prices are absolutely ridiculous. Recently on several different Facebook pages and forums, I've seen a few people ask if you can run 87 octane in a C5 Corvette. Now some people seem shocked that anybody would even ask that question and the answers they give range from the super helpful if you're into fuel economy get a Prius to if you can't afford premium you can't afford a C5 Corvette and then there's the hey it's only a few more dollars per tankful don't be cheap. Now occasionally a brave soul will step up and give a helpful and factual response, but by doing so, they'll likely face a little bit of heckling and ridicule by that tiny percentage of the group that can be the loudest and most opinionated. So for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and stick my neck out as well with total disregard for the abuse that I might take <laughs> in the comments down below. And we're gonna do that next. Toys for life. Let's jump right into the question of whether or not it's okay to fill your C5's gas tank with 87 octane. And I'm gonna start with the most credible source I can think of for this question, and that would be the manufacturer of the Corvette, General Motors. Get me one. So what exactly does GM say about this? The answer is no further away than your trusty C5 Corvette owner's manual. And by flipping to section five, it covers gasoline octane requirements. And here's what it says. Use premium unleaded gasoline with a posted octane rating of 91 or higher for the best performance. You may also use middle grade or regular unleaded gasoline rated at 87 octane or higher, but your vehicle's acceleration might be slightly reduced. If the octane is less than 87, you might get a heavy knocking noise when you drive. If this occurs, use gasoline rated at 87 octane or higher as soon as possible. Otherwise, you might damage your engine. Oh. I don't know about you guys, but I have not in my entire life seen gasoline for sale less than 87 octane. If you have, put it down in the comments below because I'm curious where they sell something like that. Now I would say that was pretty darn clear, but in my opinion, there's a little bit more to it than that. So if you'd like more than the Cliff Notes version that's in the GM manual, I'm gonna go ahead and expand on things a little bit so you can better decide if you'll ever be spotted putting mid-grade or 87 octane in your C5. Now these will be my opinions, but they are based on a pretty good understanding of what's going on behind the scenes with your C5's fuel injection system, the mechanical condition of your engine, and the climate where you live. And all of the things that we're about to discuss are absolutely relevant in helping to decide which C5 owners can get away with 87 octane and which would likely regret it. In the excerpt from the C5's owner's manual, GM identified knock as being the concern that could potentially damage your engine if you use anything less than 87 octane. What exactly is knock and how does it hurt your C5's engine? Here's a clip from a video I did last year that I think does a really good job of explaining it. First, let's talk about knock, and I want to start out by talking about what knock is not. Knock is not engine run on. engine run-on is caused when you shut off an engine that's carbureted typically that's been running a while and there's something in the combustion chamber that's red hot like the tip of the spark plug or some carbon. Anyway you shut it off and fuel still gets inside there it hits a compression stroke and there's something red hot and it continues to run. That is run-on. Do not confuse it with knock. Exactly what happens when an engine experiences knock is fairly complicated. It typically happens under high load situations, high heat, uh, maybe the timing is a little bit too high, or the octane of the fuel is too low. And when the spark plug fires, instead of getting a normal controlled explosion, imagine that this is the explosion slowed down about 500 times. Nice and smooth and predictable from where the spark plug ignites. 
Instead of that happening, the spark plug ignites and for some reason, instead of the smooth explosion, you get kind of little pockets of sub-explosions going on. These create pressure spikes in the cylinder and can break piston ring lands or even break the piston. Now if you want to pause your screen for a moment, here is the textbook definition of knock. Okay, so we've established that it's a really bad idea to use any fuel with less than 87 octane and what can happen if you do. So what exactly then is so magical about 87, 88, 89 octane that allow you to burn it in your C5 Corvette? As it turns out, your C5's fuel injection system is pretty darn sophisticated. It even includes two sensors, called knock sensors, that are located under your intake manifold and their job is to constantly listen for knock in the combustion chamber. And if they hear any knock, they tell the computer or PCM to retard the ignition timing to the extent necessary to get rid of damaging knock. So 99% of the time, knock is gonna to try to occur under heavy load when you're accelerating in your C5. So when this happens, you will lose some horsepower. How much horsepower? is gonna depend on how bad the knock was and how much timing the computer had to pull to get rid of it. Now for part throttle operation, it is extremely unlikely that you would ever notice a difference running 87 through 91 fuel, and that's because it's extremely rare that you would ever experience any serious knock under light load part throttle operation. Now for the nerds out there like me, here's a peek inside HP tuners. You can see here on the scan where knock is being detected and it's retarding the timing and it tells you how many degrees of ignition timing are pulled out. Here's a look at the engine's tune that shows the high octane table and the low octane table and the computer actually learns kind of what fuel you're using over time and it will start to apply a lower rate of timing if you consistently use say 87 octane versus 91. So now that we have a better understanding of what knock is, what causes it, how it can damage your C5's engine, and what your C5's fuel injection system can do to prevent knock, let's discuss what type of owners can get away running 87 octane and which ones really need to use 91 octane. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna take the liberty to divide Corvette owners into three different types based upon how they typically use their C5 Corvette. Group one, these folks love the way the Corvette looks. They like the way it handles. They're into going to car shows, going on cruises. They rarely, if ever, press the gas past about 40%. They're not into doing burnouts or racing. They just like to enjoy the Corvette experience. And if you're a member of this group, there is no reason you need to spend 60 cents more per gallon for premium. 87 octane will suit your needs just fine. Group two, this group definitely drives more aggressively than group one. You'll absolutely hammer it once in a while on a freeway on-ramp, or if you're out in the country, you'll probably let her cut loose a little bit. You're not into timing your runs or anything like that or competitive racing, so getting every last horsepower out of your C5 is not a life goal. So if you're a member of this group, I would use 89 octane, save a few cents per gallon for sure, and I doubt you'll ever notice a difference. Then of course, there's group three. These guys go full throttle probably every time they drive their C5. They'll race occasionally at the track or elsewhere. And if there's an extra horsepower to be found somewhere inside the C5, they want every last one. So if you're a member of this group, no surprise, use 91 octane. Now for a few extra fuel related questions that might come up in the comments below. What about 93 octane? Will it make my C5 faster? The answer is not likely. The C5 is tuned for 91 octane at the factory. So any more octane above and beyond that really won't add any horsepower. It certainly won't hurt anything either, but it'll cost you extra money for no gain. What about E15 or E85 fuel? Very clear answer on this one. Don't even think about it. Your C5 stock tune cannot accommodate the extra ethanol of 15% or 85%, so stay away from it. Now, if you have custom tuning done, then I fully support using higher ethanol fuels. How about seeking out fuel with absolutely no ethanol in it? Now this is a subject that has a lot of strong opinions either way, but here's my two cents worth. 
My supercharged C5 has been on full E85 for eight years. All I had to do, because it's an older car, is upgrade the hoses to E85 compatible hoses, and I haven't suffered a single fuel-related issue with the supercharged Fiero ever. The supercharged C5 absolutely benefits from having higher octane, so I custom blend E33, which is 33% ethanol fuel, and I've been doing that for the last three plus years with absolutely zero fuel-related issues. So, in my opinion, for a C5 Corvette using regular pump gas, which is usually about 7% ethanol, I wouldn't think twice. Absolutely fine, in my opinion. Now, if you're going to be storing the car for a year or two at a time, drain the gas. That's going to do it for this one, guys. If you found this content useful, be sure to give me a thumbs up so that YouTube knows to share this with the C5 community. If you didn't find it useful, be sure to give me some grief in the comments below. But most of all, thanks for watching.